Checking one, two, three. Are we on? Hello, hello, hello. Beep, 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 beep. Hoping we're on. Oh, yeah. Looks like we're on and cooking. All right. Fantastic. Hey, everybody. It's Mike Myers, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Mike Myers Ask Mike Anything. Uh, I've got I got to change my the goal of this live stream after two years. It is no longer Corona-based, although I may slip it in from time to time. I'm assuming people can hear me. Tolowitz says you are live and sound good. That's all I need to hear. All right, so I'm happy. Um, uh, we are talking about RAM today. I need some... <laughs> sorry. Anytime you guys see me turn, I'm actually reading the uh, chat window. So sorry about that. So anyway, uh, the goal here, uh, folks, is to help those of us who are studying for our CompT exams have an opportunity to ask me questions. So I am here to ask uh, answer questions on all of your CompTIA, but I'm also can go outside of CompTIA certification as well as general tech issues as well. I am here for you. So let's keep that in mind. So a couple of rules. Number one, uh, this starts here at 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time here in Houston, Texas, and we run until 3 o'clock. It's a one-hour show, or until the questions run out, whichever happens first. Uh, so sometimes we've run well past 3. Sometimes, usually we have about uh, 30, 45 minutes, just depending. I'm, I'm here to answer your questions. So uh, make sure you answer. you got to type those questions into the chat window so I know that you're asking me. So t speaking of the chat window, up at the top of the chat window, if you see the top chat, hit the pull down on there and switch that to live chat. That Here it comes. <sighs> I don't know why it is. I yawn on camera. I don't, I don't know. Let's have a little bit more of the uh, Mike Go-Go juice here. I got to tell you, man, I have a new uh, housekeeper, housekeeper, organizer, personal assistant. I don't even know what to call this lady. Uh, her name's Tara, and uh, she makes me coffee. I mean, it's like, holy cow. Uh, coffee is good, especially this time of day where I'm already a little bit saggy. Yeah, so I'm a... Uh, uh, so make sure you hit that, uh, put it on live chat, change the algorithm, and also make sure that uh, your timestamps are on there. So there in the chat window to the right of live chat, your little three dots, uh, click on to toggle timestamps to make sure that the timestamps are visible. Those could be very, very helpful as well. Uh, Fall fellow. My wife's name is Tara. She also makes me coffee. Does she live in Houston, Texas, Fall fellow? Could we be? Hmm. Man, it's funny at age 61, it's like still a bachelor, you know, and it's like, what do I look for in a woman? You know, do we do we look for a, a pretty face or, you know, you know, or anything? You know what I'm looking for? Somebody who make me coffee. So if you know any single ladies who are age appropriate for me, have them give me a call, man, as long as they make coffee. Uh, Zoltan just walked in the door. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here, guys. Um, so first of all, uh, you ask me questions by typing them into the chat window. Although I understand sometimes people are a little on the shy side. So if you're on the shy side, send me an email. My email address is michaelm at totalsem.com or desweds at protonmail.com. Uh, there's no better or worse email to try to contact me on. So it's, if you want a question and you're a little shy, just send it to me via email as well. Also, just so you know, my website is www.totalsem.com. And yes, I need to change that for the three of you who didn't hear about it. Total Seminars, I got bought out by National Cyber Group, a wonderful group of folks who have, uh, they are... I got to get one of the board members is a gentleman named Philip Niedermeyer, who is just good God. He's a force of nature. I just want to hang out with him all the time. Uh, so not as I believe he's Scottish. Oh, I know he's Celtic. Please, Philip. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Uh, but he's, he's just full of passion and drive and uh, really is working hard to try to fill this gap of, we don't have enough it security people. So uh, it's uh Brittany, so a Starbucks barista is what you're looking for. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so we'll see. 
We'll see what we got. So, um, yeah, we are going to be talking about RAM a little bit today, but honestly, we don't have a lot to talk about RAM. There's not a, it, it's certainly an important objective for the CompTIA A+, uh, but uh, questions are pretty well established, so we can kind of, I'm not going to give you away the answers to quest, known questions, but I can give you on the topics. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, Cinderfly. Cinderfly. Welcome aboard. All right. TC is here. Johnny Five is alive. Mohammed Nashan. Will come to A plus content get updated soon? Uh, yes. Um, I, I don't want to go into details, but we ran into some real problems on the A plus book that uh, are going to slow stuff down. Mainly, well, I could go into some detail. It's very hard to get printers to print books right now. It's just the demand is so high. So we've had some delays on that. The A-plus book is done. The uh, A-plus videos are well into production. The nice thing about the videos is they don't take uh, that long, but I would anticipate, eh, say, about 60, 90 days tops before we start seeing videos. Uh, so just to give you guys an idea, keep in mind though, for me guys, I always push the idea that you should never take the new exam, always take the old exam for as long as possible. And I'm telling everybody, and I continue to stand by this. And I have done this for over 30 years and it works. And that is always take the old exam whenever possible. Look, the new exam came out last month, month and a half ago. And CompTIA kind of surprised everybody getting it out that fast. But the reality is, is nobody knows what's on the exam. I don't know what's on the exam. Uh, I hope I'm still up and running. I just had something pop up. So I hope I'm still on. Uh, so nobody knows what's on the exam. So when a new exam comes out, I mean, as a creator of training materials, all I get is the same objective list that you guys get. I just get it a few months in advance. So people don't really know what's on the exam. And I can tell you, I've watched this for years. Here, I'll draw a chart, right? So here's a pass rate. New exam comes out, pass rate drops, and, and then quickly builds back up. So I do not believe in taking the new exam as long as the old exam is available. Do, Nobody, I, I said that, every, I, okay, I got to put a call for it. Nobody cares when you take the test. I have heard, I'm sorry, nobody cares which test you took. I've heard people counter me on that. I have personally not uh, had any experience with that. They want to know when you took the exam, but most people want to know, they want to know when and not which exam you took. So uh, it will be out and it will be great. And uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, doing uh, my A+. plus. Now, you guys do need to keep in mind that uh, Mike Myers is not going to be doing A+, plus, Net+, plus, or Secure. I, I'm going to do this last A+, plus with a new SME. and uh, But after that, I will not be starring on any of the total seminars, A+, plus, Net+, plus, or Security+, plus videos. I will be there. I will be acting as series editor. I will be working directly with all the SMEs to make sure that we have great product there and we're going to be on top of this stuff. And uh, so I'm always going to be there in spirit, but I am not going to be in front of the camera. Uh, I will be shooting some videos, uh, mainly promotional things. I'm also going to be shooting some videos on my own, uh, which are not really certification based. We're not directly. I can't. I, I have a non-compete that says, obviously, that I can't compete with National Cyber Group. I'm a big investor in them. I don't want to compete against them. I want to work with them, and I will. But I do have some independent videos I'll be doing, and uh, I'll let you guys know about those as they pop up from time to time. So it should be fun. All right. Uh, Chaco Taco. Chaco Taco, man. Good to see you. I'm really loving your Security 601 series so far on the cryptography stuff. Cryptography is fun. Hey, I got to tell you, Chaco Taco. If you want to have something fun, uh, I need you to look up. Uh, okay, you guys, let, let me say this correctly. Do a Google search on Pringle Can Enigma. E N I G Enigma. E N I G M A. Enigma was the name of a code machine used by the Germans during World War II, and uh, it's it's a fascinating device that talks about 
if you're in cryptography, then algorithm is a very, very important thing. And uh, it's an interesting way to learn about algorithms uh, done in cryptography. Obviously, this is pre-binary. But check out Pringle Can Enigma. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and type that in. Because I just think it's the coolest thing. There we go. Pringle Can Enigma. Check that out when you get a chance. It's uh, it, it's just fun stuff. If you really want to get into uh, uh, cryptography. Mohammed, no one like you on camera. I'm going to stay on camera, guys. I just, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day guys shooting a certification videos is extremely hard work. Extremely hard work. And, you know, I'm just at a point in life where I don't want to or need to work 60 hours a week anymore. Uh, but I'm going to be around. And uh, uh, and I'll, I'll be, I'll always, the, the AMAs uh, will always be here. Uh we may change. I'm still thinking about changing the AMAs. So instead of a Monday, Wednesday, I'm thinking about doing like a Monday, Thursday thing and then doing the Thursday at a later time so that more people in the United States can watch this. So I've been toying with that idea. Uh, we will always have at least one time a week our 2 p.m. Uh, very heavily in the uh, European market kind of folks. But we're, we're always thinking about new stuff, too. Foul fellow, I know mileage may vary per person. Do you think there's still enough time to study and take the 1001, 1002 and pass? Absolutely. Uh, we've got till October. So I'm not going to start really worrying until like the end of August is where I'll start telling people, okay, you probably don't want to start now. Uh, you know, keep in mind, it, it takes the average person about 220 personal study hours to uh, be ready for the CompTIA exams. CompTIA A plus exams. So the problem is, is how much time per week can you put into it? Okay. So if you can only put 10 hours a week of personal study in, then that's going to be 20, it's going to be, yeah, 22 weeks. So that, that would be too long. Most people, when they're studying hard, are going to be able to put 40 hours a week in. That's a pretty average number. So most people can go from start to finish in about five, six weeks. And uh, so there's still plenty of time. If somebody, like I said, come come the end of August, I'll probably start telling people to shift more towards the 1101. But at this point in the, in the game, I'm going to say uh, you're, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Zoltan, ba okay, I'm going to scroll up. Let's start looking for questions here. All right. Uh, da -da -da. Teacher Russell, good morning. If anyone needs any tips on how to fail the Network Plus before he retires, I'm here. Teacher Russell, did you fail? I'm sorry, man. Da, 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 da. Yes, we're doing a giveaway today. Teacher Russell, you got to tell me why you said that. Now I'm going to be all worried. Uh, foul fellow, hello. Kathleen Stevens. Da, da, da. Uh, Johnny Five, does Network Part... Network Plus have two parts like the A Plus? No. In fact, the A Plus is the only CompTIA exam that I'm aware of, and I'm pretty much aware of all of them, that comes in two parts. Every other CompTIA certification is a single test. Coffee. Oh, yeah. So, first of all, uh, before we get into too many questions, I want to remind you guys that the diet is on, people. So, uh, you should join me on my fitness pal. I would love to have more people joining me. Uh, my uh, and uh, so on my fitness pal. My name is Desweds One, D E S W E D S One. Desweds One, and friend me on uh, on my fitness pal. Just be aware that I, I'm going to be watching you guys too, and I, I'm the cheerleader type. So yeah, so zero alcohol since. Extremely early Saturday morning. Why is Mike drinking extremely early on a Saturday morning? Because I had to get on an airplane. Uh, 1,500 calories a day and basically no carbs. So uh, this is not quite the aggressive diet I had during the infamous nap of a week and a half ago. Uh, but it's still pretty aggressive. This one's a little bit different because I'm making myself drink all the coffee I want, which is, I don't know, 
Good or bad, keeps him awake in the afternoons. Keeps him from sagging his bed. Yes, we're going to be talking about RAM today. Shortly, it's not that much to talk about. Uh, just looking for questions, guys. Will Shaw. <laughs> so, we're talking about RAM today. I need 30-pin SIMs at 1 meg each. Got any laying around, Mike? No. In fact, can you get one meg? Yeah, I guess you could get one meg 30-pin SIMs. I got to think about that for a minute. If you guys don't know what a 30-pin SIM is, good. It's the RAM of your forefathers and hasn't been on the A-plus exam in almost a decade. So Will is playing with old stuff and having fun. J.N. Mesa. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Looking for questions. Yeah, Starbucks barista. Man, Brittany, you, 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 you're reading me like a book. Tolowit, uh, Ram question. If DDR4 and DDR5 had the same number of pins, do you think it should be a thing to make a firmware update on the chipset to use the new memory if it would fit? Let me think about that one. Okay, Tolowit, the problem, the problem is, is that... <clears throat> Let me make sure I'm not a liar. I have actually not looked at the pinouts of DDR4 versus DDR5. Just because they have the same number of pins, that doesn't necessarily mean they do the same thing, right? But let's let's just say for a moment they do. If they do, you know, the main reason that we upgrade to new... <coughs> Sorry. Here he goes. The main reason we upgrade to new technologies of RAM is because older technologies can't handle can handle the speed of uh, that are demanded with uh, that newer technologies of RAM provide. It's all about the speed. Uh, there's other little features here and there, but I'm going to ignore those for a minute. And again, we're assuming that DDR4 and DDR5 had the exact same pinout. Um, isn't that embarrassing? I've never actually sat there and saw all those. I've never walked through DDR5's pinout and compared to DDR4. What's wrong with me? Uh, but it's a matter of speed. So I am unfamiliar with, uh, well, yeah, and, uh, you may not have the same pinout, but it's got the keen is different, right? One moment, please. This is how embarrassing it is. The pinout on DDR5 different than DDR4. It's gotta be, it's gotta be. Let me look this up for me. Oh, I can't find Somebody find it for me and tell me. It's going to take me forever to get that answer. Dave Rush is telling me that we reviewed... All of the DDR5 specs. Okay, well, Dave Rush, I can only tell you the same thing I tell the IRS every year. I forgot. So, uh, anyway, the bottom line is, Tolowit, is that it's usually that a older memory, an, an older uh, UEFI doesn't have settings for higher clock speeds, or there might be a hardware limitation for it. Otherwise, if the pinouts were the same, we could do that. Dave Rush making jokes about Phil Niedermeyer and his name. Joe Cross, 723. Hey, Joe Cross. Hello, Mike. I watched your videos back in 2013 and 2014, and it was the start of my IT journey in Vosadot? Vocational? Well, vocational school, then college. Thank you, Mary, for everything. Joe Cross, I'm here for you, brother. Everybody keeps thinking I'm retiring. I'm not retiring. Guys, I'm going to be around forever. Forever. Jason Dion, Professor Messer. I ain't going nowhere, buddy. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. 
Joe Cross, I am looking to get my CSSP. What do you think of that cert? CSSP is a great cert, but keep in mind, CSSP is a managerial IT security. It's it's used for people who are going to be getting into governance. Uh, a chief information security officer is almost certainly going to be a CISSP. I got to tell you, CISSP, no matter what people say, ain't that tough of an exam. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not an easy exam. Uh, but it's just not that hard. I, I would rather go for CISSP than uh, do another, uh, I don't know, CYSA plus. That was pretty tough. And, and the thing is, is that if you're looking to go into management, uh, IT security management, then the CISSP is just straight up required. Uh but I would think somebody who is more early in their career would be looking towards more practical, technical uh, IT security certifications than just leapfrogging straight up to CISSP. I can tell you one thing, it won't hurt. CISSP will never hurt. God, yeah, Tolowit, I, I really appreciate when you're like letting me know stuff like I'm still on. Mm -mm -mm. Looking for questions. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, if you, uh, <laughs> Tolo, it, hopefully we'll be seeing less of Mike. You will be, uh, so that, uh, but, you know, really, you should seriously consider, even if you don't want to lose weight, you just want to, like, cheer me on, because I could use some cheering on, uh, my fitness pal it's a free app just friend me again desweds one and uh you can actually see what my weight is and see what i'm eating and when i'm cheating <laughs> yeah um, choco taco nope i can't commit to no alcohol ever i'm not giving up alcohol forever it's just my problem with alcohol number one it's empty calories right and probably because i don't eat sweets hardly the, that's one problem. And number two, the other problem I have with alcohol is lack of inhibition. So, you know, I get a few glasses of wine in me and I was like, oh, more bread, more wine. And, you know, so I'm 60 years old, guys. I need to be skinnier. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, hold on, looking for questions here. The keying is in a different spot between DDR4 and DDR5. Thanks. But again, Tolwit, even if they were keyed in the same place, I think timing would be an issue. Matus Riska. Hi, Mike. Taking into account quicker and quicker SSDs, do you think there is any chance that RAM will be abandoned altogether? Oh, one of my favorite questions. Could we ever reach a point where mass storage speeds could become so fast that RAM could be faded out? No way. The reason being is that CPU speeds continue to move up faster and faster uh, and needs... If, if I could draw a chart, uh, th okay, so this is CPU speeds. And it, whoops, I'm trying to do this. In the, so it kind of goes whoop, like this. Here, and now this is going to be mass storage speeds. That's kind of more like, it's SSDs are not powers of 10 faster than uh, traditional magnetic media. They're fast, don't get me wrong. They're a lot faster than traditional hard drives. And they have a lot less latency. But... The amount of speed increase we've seen in CPUs and RAM over time is much greater than what we've seen in uh, SSDs. That was my uh, head editor, McGraw-Hill, giving me a call. He forgot that I'm doing my AMAs right now. But I at least have to be nice enough to do a can I call you back later thing. All right. Johnny Five, how has the great resignation affected the IT industry, if at all? 
Oh, Johnny Five, you're going to get me in a non-politically correct answer here. But I'm going to do it anyway. The Great Resignation is a short-term pile of garbage that was developed because all of our governments, as a result of corona, found themselves putting out gazillions of dollars to help people pay for stuff that technically they, they couldn't do. And I had no problem with that. I'm glad to help out people. Uh, I personally helped out a lot of people during the corona uh, virus, and, and we'll be glad to do it again in the future. Hopefully not too distant. Hopefully in the very distant future. Uh, but it created an attitude uh, with the Zoom meetings where people can sit in their house all day. For all of you guys know, I'm wearing nothing but underwear underneath this. Uh, and it, it, uh, I, I want to say this right without you guys getting mad at me. It created a universe of people who didn't care about what they did for a living an opportunity to give themselves more leisure time. I think people who have great passion for what they do found the corona and staying at home to be a hindrance, not a help. Certainly in my case it did. Uh, uh, I don't want to get into a big argument over this. I, I, I'm very, very unhappy about the Great Resignation, and I think the recession... Man, I hope I'm wrong, guys, but... I'm really scared right now that uh, we're about to go into a very ugly time worldwide. And having lived through two small recessions and then arguably one in the 70s, which I'd call a depression, but they don't, stagflation and all that, we're in for a rough ride, guys, a real rough ride. And I remember being as a young person a certain very famous Democratic president of the United States saying, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That was a Democrat. And I'm worried that we have created a few generations. And look, I'm a boomer, and I'm not saying everything we've done is perfect. I recognize that as boomers, we've made a lot of mistakes, all right? So I don't want you to think this is a me against the young people thing, because it's not. Uh but I fear that we have created a generation or two of people who instead of looking to themselves, they look to the government. And I, I don't think that that's a good thing. And, and, and I'm, again, American politics aside, this is not a Democrat thing. This is not a Republican thing. It is an across-the-board kind of thing that – surprises an old man a lot. Uh, have I been blessed because I've always done what I wanted to do and nothing else? I mean, I'm not saying I've done everything I wanted to do. You know, I've had, had a kid and had to work hard and stuff, but generally I've always done what I wanted to do. And I fear that the great resignation is going to run face first into the great recession and is going to have one of the most nightmarish wake-up calls we've ever seen. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. Boy, do I hope I'm wrong. But I'm not going to lie, folks. Right now, I'm legitimately fearful about the future. Old men always do this. I mean, I remember being, you know, a teenager and my great-grandfather saying the same thing and everything worked out just fine. But uh, we don't live in a society that can deal with people who don't work. And I know there's more to the great resignation than that. I, I recognize I'm simplifying it. And I also, I got on, I don't get on Reddit very often, but I got on Reddit and there's a subreddit called anti-work. A-N-T-I-W-O-R-K. And has Dave Russ started to tell me shut up yet? Nope. So I guess I'm okay. I'll rant a moment more. Uh, and these anti-work, it's just like, how can we have a society where people don't contribute to it? I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand. I'll, I'm going to shut up, guys, because I know, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm wrong here. 
And I do believe in young people. I, I, uh, I, I think that uh, young people do have good ambition. I think that young people do want to make the world better. I think that young people do want, want to, you know, build something. And there are real problems being a young person today. Housing in the, and I'm just going to talk about housing right now. And I, I can only talk about the United States because I'm not familiar enough with Europe. But here in the United States, uh, this is the first time in history where a young person making decent money can't buy a house. They can't buy a house, you know? The, the problem is, is that if you think you're going to look at big brother government to try to give you some answer on how to deal with this, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Maybe we need the Great Resignation. Maybe we need the Great Recession. Uh, maybe we need people who are dedicated and, 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 and who want to work. The one thing I will tell you guys, and this is important, is that during recessionary periods, and I've lived through a bunch of these guys, every recessionary period that we've ever gone through has always been an opportunity for those who are awake enough to see it. For example... I guarantee you, guarantee, the United States and probably the world is ready for a serious resetting in housing prices, especially with interest rates going up. And if I were a young person right now, I'd be doing everything I can to save a couple of bucks. And I should get a big sermon on that. If you're not saving $10 a week, at least, you know, quit smoking or whatever it is. But, uh, opportunities pop up uh, during recessions. Like, for example, total seminars, people tend to go look for training during recessions. So my company's traditionally done really well. Uh, but don't don't fear a recession. Fear your inability to take advantage of it. And uh, that usually means putting a couple of pesos together or being ready to make the big move. You know, because it's tough to find work all of a sudden. And here's a job in Pueblo, New Mexico or something like that, and and which normally you wouldn't even think about. But maybe it's just time to, you know, jump in the car, you know, do a, do a, a road trip and uh, eat ramen noodles for a while. All right, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. I'm, I'm wasting time. It's only 2.30. we got time to cover everything. Thank you for letting me blather on there, kids. Oh, no. Teacher Russell failed two hours ago. I am so sorry, man. Teacher Russell, Teacher Russell, if you need to talk to me, I am here for you, my brother. Give me a holler at uh, michaelemmatotalsim.com or deswoods at Proton Mail. If you, if you just want to shoot the poop, I am here to speak with you. And what I will tell everybody, number one, failing any exam is a pain in the rear end. But that's all it is. This is not an SAT. This is not an O level. This is just a certification exam. And other than the hassle of money and the hassle of time, you just retake it and you're fine. Woo, Johnny Five, you lit me up there, didn't you, brother? Get me talking about all that stuff. Uh, Don Odinga, Uncle Mike, why is SRAM not, used, not widely used as DRAM? Because it costs about 10 times as much. It's much more expensive. Every single bit in SRAM consists of four transistors, whereas in a, a regular DRAM, it's one transistor and a capacitor. Looking for questions. Oh, nobody... Slam me for going off topic there. Uh, Brittany, what is the difference in 2.2 and 5.5 gigahertz when talking about 802.11? Hope that makes sense. So, Brittany, uh, when we talk about radio, radio has to be tuned to a frequency. The transmitter has to transmit at a very specific frequency, and the receivers have to receive at a very specific frequency. Okay? Now, that there's usually, and when I say frequency, it's going to be like 2.4235 megahertz, okay? And uh, so it's up to having very precise tuners that hit these things. Now, 
if you're talking about like an old AM radio or something like that, where we could just turn a knob, uh, it's easy enough to by hand to tune those things in. But when we start talking about digital applications, the whole idea of manual frequency tuning kind of just doesn't work. So what we do instead is we use a range of frequencies, and I don't remember exactly what it is for, and it's not 2.2, it's 2.4, but that's okay. Uh, I got to look it up because I have forgotten exactly what the uh, range is for 802.11, 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, so I'm actually on uh, Wikipedia, and I looked up the uh, list of WLAN channels, and uh, there are 14 channels. Okay, hang on. So the frequency goes from uh, 2.14, 2.14, point four zero one to two point four nine five so what they do is they break it up into preset frequencies called channels so a channel is just preset frequencies so instead of telling somebody to tune your wireless access point to two point four three seven they just sell you they'll just say set your wireless access point to channel six so that's what, when we talk about channel, that's all we mean is a preset. So keep in mind that what I just talked about in the 2.4, that's a range of frequencies, right? It's a range. So when we talk about this range of frequencies, we use the word band. So the 2.4 uh, gigahertz, I said megahertz, didn't I? Uh, Dave Rush, I'm going to tell you the analogy you told me to use. I don't use it. I'll tell you why later. So the 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 2.4 uh, gigahertz range is uh, specifically set aside in a band, and this band is called the 2.4 gigahertz band. Okay. There's another band used it was a number of other bands. The other real popular band is the 5 gigahertz band, uh, which is, uh, uh, actually, Brittany, you're correct. It is like 5.5. .5. I can't remember exactly what it is. So it's actually not 5.5. I don't know where I got that. So the the other very popular 802.11 band is the 5 gigahertz, not 5.5. And that runs from 5.035 gigahertz. And again, I'm just on Wikipedia here, folks. And that runs to, oh, there's a lot of channels. And, uh, well, I guess you could because it runs all the way up to 5.990. So I guess we could say 5.5. Eh, that's what I get for forgetting things. So, uh... Let me, let's, why don't, why, let's now answer her question. Uh, where'd you go, Brittany? What is the difference in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz when talking about 0211? So you got two different range of, of channels. Uh, they're used for different stuff. Brittany, you got to keep in mind that the entire radio frequency range is basically all used up. So people are always fighting to get a little something in here and there. And uh, so this has been allocated uh, here in the United States by the FCC. Uh, different countries agree by fiat uh, on, on different things. But they're two totally different bands. They're two totally different bands. And by having different bands, uh, you know, we all started when 802.11 came out. Everything was on 2.4. That was it. There was no other choice. Uh, but however quickly, this other band called 5 gigahertz came out. 2.4 has a little bit longer range. 5 gigahertz is a bit of a shorter range. 5 gigahertz is better at handling broader, uh, higher speeds than 2.4. Uh, 5 gigahertz uh, is chopped up into a lot more channels. And even the channels themselves have different widths. You can do that on 2.4, but it's a lot harder. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits to 5 gigahertz versus 2.4. Uh, the thing is, though, is that you don't get to pick this. You pick a technology. If you're going to use 802.11g, you will be using the 2.4 band. There's no choice. It's like if you buy an AM radio, you're going to be using the AM band. That's it. Uh, equally, if you're going to get 802.11ax, 
uh, you're going to be uh, God, I hate to say, 802.11ax is is on the five gigahertz band. There's some weird stuff you can do, but nobody it doesn't really count. So there are two different bands that do different things and provide different uh, capabilities. It's important that you know those bands. It's important that you understand the concept of channels, Brittany. You don't have to memorize a bunch of channels. It's easy to remember the 2.4 channels because there's really only 14 of them. It's really hard to memorize the 5 gigahertz channels because there's like a 10 gazillion of them. I don't remember how many there are. Maybe 100. TC, 233. I'm not going to quote all of you, TC, but here's a good one. Get out of debt and no recession can touch you. Man, I got to tell you guys, I have somebody near and dear to me who's a little bit tight on money right now. And I was talking to her about it, and she's like, well, I have to have the new iPhone. I'm like, it's almost a 1000 bucks. Just get a little cheap, what we call cricket service down here in the United States. And they wouldn't do it. They had to have this technology. And they have to live in a certain place, even if it means going into massive debt. I just, I never thought that was the right thing to do. Hey, I've gone into debt. You know, I've, I've done the student loans thing. It was a lot easier when I did it than when you guys did. But, man, debt. I, when, when things are tight, I am, I can pinch a quarter in half. Yeah, I'm a boomer. I I am I was born in 1961. How's that for ancient? Joshua Nizwanger. Just got your A plus. Big round of applause to you, sir. John, just John at 236. Hi, Mike. What do you think of cybersecurity versus DevOps roles for someone drawn towards generalism? The, uh, well, if you if you want to be a generalist, do not get into DevOps because DevOps is its own thing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, DevOps means you know uh, I don't even want to say that because I'm going to confuse people, so I'm going to back up from that a little bit. John, just go with cybersecurity in general. But the thing is, is that, okay, the, these are the progression opportunities of my company. I'd go cybersecurity, although DevOps could probably pay you more, certainly in the short term. Oh, dear. I'm assuming we got rid of that little bot that's causing trouble. I got it. I got it, Dave. Sorry, guys. Give me a minute. We got we got bot problems. All right. I think I got them, guys. Bots happen. It's no big deal. Uh... <laughs> okay, guys. So a couple of things. Number one, uh, Brittany, how do bots do that? It's easy enough to get a bot to log into a channel and just start doing key presses. It's not that hard. Uh, guys, uh, do keep in mind a couple of things. Number one, just because you're nice enough to show up today, we offer a 50% discount. That is half off of our uh, combined ebook and practice questions. Remember, in order to pass any certification, not even computer certification, not only CompTIA certification, I don't care what kind of certification you're trying to get. Number one, you need some kind of instruction. That could be an instru uh, instructor led or it could be videos. Number two, you're going to need some kind of reference, some kind of book. And number three, you're going to need some way to 
see how well you're doing, and that is practice questions. So what we're offering everybody, just because you're nice enough to show up, 50% discount on our combined ebook practice question bundle. Keep in mind, we call our practice questions here the total tester. That's our that's our groovy name. Uh, anyway, in order to take advantage of this deal, as it shows right there in the uh, live chat, just head over to www.totalsim.com, head over to our merchant area. Let's say you're interested in NetPlus, grab the NetPlus ebook, not the paper book, grab the ebook, and then grab the NetPlus total tester. And at checkout, just type in crash, C R A S H, uh, in, into the checkout window, and you get half off. That's it. Also, do keep in mind, guys, especially you know, a lot of times a lot of people have questions where it really requires more uh, two-way conversation. Uh, we have a wonderful Discord channel that you need to be checking out. We've got a uh, connection for it right there. Uh, uh, Dave's posted a link uh, for a Discord information. Please check out our Discord channel. Uh, no offense, guys, but I'm not the best tech on that Discord channel. We got a lot of great techs out there. Uh, I try to get on when I can, but if not, I assure you, you'll be surrounded by a lot of people who are very skilled and who are glad to help you out. So be sure to also bring your camera and your headset, especially if you got something you want to show real time, and that can help it. All right. 245, Conform Sanity. Hi, Mike. I am wanting to know your opinion on whether you're 220-1001 Udemy course would be sufficient study material for the newer course. It would not be, but conform sanity. My more important question is, why do you want to take the 220-1001? Why do you want to take the 220-1101? Conform sanity. Why do you want to take the new exam? You can take the old exam through October. The old exam, which we've had three years to get up to speed, and everybody's pretty comfortable with what's on the exam. Taking a brand new exam, you are going to watch pass rates drop. They have dropped every time a new exam comes out. They've, this has been going on for 30 years. It's not going to change. You never take the new exam when the old exam is still available. Period. I ride dirt. I have my 1002 scheduled for July 25th. Thanks to you, Mr. Myers. Rereading your exam book as we speak. I ride dirt. Come on back and let us know how you did, man. I want to hear about that. Cinderfly, I'm still learning the Discord. Yeah, it's not that hard. All right, so a couple of things. Number one, I want to talk about RAM. And in particular, what I want to do is just take a few minutes uh, and talk about what are some of the trickier questions about RAM that you could run into on the CompTIA exam. And for me, the biggest one is, Remembering, you ready? Remembering the pins and remembering your DDR versus your PC speeds. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so what I got here is a quick little, uh, don't worry, folks, it's only one page today. Uh, so what we have here, is we talk about a particular tech. Oh, that's interesting. It was all there a minute ago. Ah! All right. Oh, now it popped up. Okay, great. All right, so I want you guys to take a look at this chart. This is probably half of the of the kind of questions you're going to run into on RAM anyway. Now, this is all in my books and videos anyway. But in particular, and uh, DDR is not even going to be on there, but I put that in as a uh, reference. Make sure you know the different PID numbers. I mean, there's only three different numbers, okay? Uh, so DDR, and that's not even on there. So it's really only two different pinouts now. DDR2 and 3 have a 240. DDR4 and 5 share a 288. The trick here is right here, guys. So when we talk about speeds, we have a DDR speed, which is the raw output speed. And then we have a module speed, which is actually the speeds in mega, gigabits. Well, at 30, that would be gigabits per second. Okay? So... If you see a piece of RAM and it has a DDR speed of DDR2-667, that is a DDR2 speed. So look at this real carefully. First of all, it says DDR2. That's how you know it's DDR2. Do you see the 2? That means it's DDR2. See down here? See the 4? That means it's DDR4. Oh, Mike, that's super obvious here. Yeah, well, watch what happens on the exams. Okay. So uh, the module speed is always, you guys, just, this is such an easy thing to remember. Take this number, whatever this number is, multiply it times eight, and you get the module speed. 
Either one of these are perfectly good ways to define the speed of a particular stick of RAM, okay? So you should be able to look at the DDR speed or the PC speed and tell the difference. Also notice under the module speed where it says PC, see the four? That means it's DDR4. Get the idea? Again, I know everybody thinks, oh, this is really obvious, Mike. Why are you even bringing this up? Because people get these questions wrong all the time. Just remember this, and that's going to be half the questions you're ever going to get on RAM. The other questions we get on RAM have to do with things like, for example, banking. The whole idea behind banking in RAM simply means that RAM has a it, width. It's a, RAM, individual sticks of RAM are going to be uh, 64 bits wide, now 128 bits wide. And if you have an address bus on your PC that is, let's say, really wide, not, I got, got to be careful, not the address bus. The address bus simply addresses the RAM, the data bus. Uh, why? If you have a data bus that's 128 bits wide and you're using sticks of RAM that are only 64 bits wide, you're wasting every click of the clock. So what they'll do is they'll do this concept of banking. The most common form of banking we see today is uh, dual banking. And I don't have a picture. I should have a picture. I didn't even think to do this. If you look on a motherboard, a lot of times they'll have different colored slots. Those usually reflect the banks. And uh, dual banking, we've had triple banking for a while. Although that's kind of faded out. With dual banking, that simply means that when you put RAM into a computer, you put it in with matching sticks and you fill the bank. That's all it means. So if you have two four gig sticks of DDR4, you will snap those into the motherboard and what did I just say? Two four gig. And that means you have a total of eight gigs of RAM. Got it? Outside of the banks, you can mix sizes okay so if i have two banks which is very common on motherboards today where you see four slots uh, that almost invariably means you got two banks and in one bank let's say you put in two fours ready in one bank i put in two fours and in the other bank i put in two eights what is the total amount of ram that i have in that system figure it out 24 gigs of ram so it's always additive the other thing uh is for years, if you had a bank of RAM and you only put one stick in, for many years, the PC wouldn't run. That is universally untrue now. Uh, you know, there's always an exception. Anytime I say universal, everybody's going to talk about this one new motherboard that has a problem with it. But in general, it is, uh, if you put in a single stick of RAM into a, a dual channel uh, uh, slots, it will still work, but it just doesn't work as well. Uh, so honestly, if you cover what I just said, that's going to cover most of it. Also, the other thing to keep in mind is when in doubt on a piece of RAM, read the motherboard book. Okay. Will this, will this motherboard use dual-sided RAM? Read the motherboard book. Does this motherboard need ECC RAM? Read the motherboard book. And the other thing to keep in mind is that it's impossible to break a computer by putting in, if the RAM fits in the slot, you cannot break a computer by putting in the wrong RAM. It won't run or it won't run well, but you can't break anything. So keep that one in mind too. All right. It's talking about Mike cutting out because Chaco Taco doesn't like Mike. Captain Kirk talking. Uh, all right. Looks like we're kind of running out here. All right, so let's have a little bit of fun. How about we have one quick competition? Let us have a competition that we're going to be giving away. You guys ready? We're going to be giving away 90-day access to the practice questions of your choice from the Total Seminars 
library. We got tons of practice questions, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right. So we'll have a quick competition. It's almost three o'clock and we'll call it a day. All right. Since we were talking about memory. Guys, this is going to be a quick one. Get your fingers on the keyboard. You guys ready? First person to answer this question is going to win 90 day free access. In order to pass the CompTIA A+, you only have to remember two pin sizes for RAM. What are the two pin counts for RAM? That's DDR2 through DDR5. There's only two numbers. What are the two numbers? First person to type it in is going to win 90-day free access. Go! Rosebud. Will Shaw, 72-168. Will Shaw is old. All right, we got a winner. We got a winner. And the winner is going to be today, Joshua Niswonger. Joshua, congratulations to you, sir. You have won 90-day free access to the practice questions of your choice, courtesy of Total Seminars. Let go. There we go. And uh, Joshua, in order to uh, claim your prize, you got to jump through a hoop. Joshua, you got to send my buddy Dave Rush an email. Do Joshua, send it. It's Dave R at totalsem.com. Uh, send him an email. In that email, Joshua, you ready? Type in your YouTube name. And that's however, not your real name. If your real name is Joshua Niswanger, then type that in. Type in your email address in the body of the letter. I know you got a return address on the email. We still want it in the body. And then, of course, number three, Joshua, let us know which exam you want. In order to find out which exams you want, just head over to the Total Seminars uh Total Seminars website, www.totalsem.com. Check them out. Find what you like. Or if you know what you want, then just send Dave an email. He's expecting your call. All right, guys. I am out the door here. Tolwit. I got, I knew what you meant. Tolwit. I was talking about the sled. Thank you. I, yes. I forgot the name of the movie. His sled. Citizen Kane. There we go. Okay, I got it. I got it. All right, guys, I am out of here. Uh, it was good to see you all. Do keep in mind that this Friday, right here on the Total Seminars channel, right here on YouTube, same same bat time, same bat channel, uh, Dave Rush will be having his Dave Rush AMA, his drama, and uh, be sure to uh, join him on that. Dave does a great job. Dave Rush concentrates on the Raspberry Pi. Now, keep in mind, you're like, oh, I don't care about a Raspberry Pi. Well, you should because Dave – Dave works very hard to come up with ways to use a very cheap device to replace expensive devices to help you learn about things, in particular on CompTIA certifications. Uh, uh, everybody's talking to me. Uh, 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 uh. Make it transfers for a second. Thanks, Dave. I forgot about that one. All right, but other than that... Uh, we are out the door. Folks, thanks again for showing up. I will be back on here. Will I be back on there? Oh, my gosh. I forgot. Don't leave yet. I forgot. Oh, a lot of people left. I'm going to be a grandpa. And uh, is it next week or the week after? I can't even remember. I'm leaving. I'm going to head for Denver, Colorado to hang out with my daughter. Uh, I will probably be doing the AMAs remotely. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I've had two grandsons, but I'm ready for... Uh, I'm ready for a granddaughter, and uh, so I'm pretty excited to get to play grandpa with the kids and all that stuff. So it should be fun, and uh, we are going to be doing this. So I, I, I like being called grandpa. Everybody's like, hey, gramps. I'm like, yeah, you know, act my age, not my shoe size. Uh, but anyway, so it'll probably be remote, but we will be on. Until then, I'm out the door, folks. This is your Uncle Mike saying bye-bye.